What's up guys? If you guys follow me on Instagram, you're gonna see the, this picture that I just posted. Uh, I was really happy with how this picture turned out um, and I'm gonna show you today how I edit it in Adobe Lightroom. Um, this was the before and this was the after picture. So pretty significant change. I'm shooting on the Sony A6300 with a 50mm 1.8 which is pretty killer for portraits um, for an APS-C body. So let's hop onto the computer and I'll show you how I did it. We're in Adobe Lightroom right now. I'm running Adobe CC, um, I think 2015. So I think this is the newest version of Lightroom. If you're on something different, it should be all the same. We're gonna use sort of the basic color correction in Adobe Lightroom. So as you can see, this is the after picture. Um, I'm super happy with how it turned out. Again, if you haven't seen it on Instagram, go give it a like there. And if you could follow me, that would be greatly appreciated as well. So this is the before picture that we were working with. As you can see, it's a very flat picture profile and slightly underexposed. My brother was taking the photo and he's not the best photographer. Um, so it's a little bit dark, um, but it is pretty gray. So it's better to have it a little bit too dark than too uh, overexposed because then we don't lose any information. It was shot at ISO 100 with a 50mm f1.8 at 1.8 and with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a, or 1 500th of a second. So let's go into the develop tab and start tweaking this photo. I'm going to show you exactly how I got it step by step. So the first thing I always do is do a um, lens correction. So usually on most lenses they have a built-in lens profile and you can enable that in Lightroom and that will take off any distortion as well as any unwanted vignetting in the picture. So when using a 50 millimeter lens um, you're not going to get too much distortion or vignetting um, but I still like to do it anyways um, just because that helps when I go to use auto exposure. So as sort of a first step I like to do auto exposure as you can see for this photo, it's a little bit bright for my liking, so I'm going to drop this back down to about 1 15th. That should be good. And for white balance, I always shoot in auto white balance um, like 90% of the time. Um, so usually it's okay, sometimes it requires a little bit of tweaking. Um, for this, I'm going to make it a little bit more blue. I'm going to really try to make sort of a cool look to it as well. Uh, as you can see, the sky is pretty um, exposed so I'm going to drop the highlights just a little bit if I can. Um, shadows, I like how those are pumped up a little bit. Um, whites we can drop a little bit and the contrast, I want to bring a lot more contrast back into this photo. So as you can see that's looking a lot better already. Um, a few things that I want to do too is add some clarity this is really going to bring out um, a lot more details um, without over sharpening the photo. Clarity, you definitely shouldn't overuse it. As you can see, if you do too much, um, it's definitely an interesting sort of HDR look. And if you do too little, it looks like you just blurred the whole photo. But a little bit of clarity, uh, I really like to use. So I'll drop that down to about that. Vibrance, I'm going to pump that up a little bit and then desaturate one down. Um, I sort of like that. So that's sort of our basic color correction. Um, what I also really like to do is add a little bit of a fade to um, the photo. So a fade is sort of making your darkest point a little bit more gray instead of black. So to do this we can use the tone curve. I'm going to add a point in the middle and a point in the bottom corner and then I'm going to drag this last point up a little bit, usually to about 10% and then drag this one down a little bit more and that's going to crush the blacks a little bit. That's looking pretty cool. So I'm liking the overall correction of this. One thing I wanted to do is make my skin a little brighter um, and a little bit more colorful. It's the middle of winter and I've lost my tan from the summer, um, but with the magic of Photoshop we can bring that back a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the saturation of the reds a little bit and then the oranges, about 15, and then yellow, about 15. One thing you can do is use the up and down arrows to sort of jump five or um, plus five or minus five points, which I find helps to make a really quick edit. 
I think my lips are looking a little bit too pink, so I'm going to take the red slider and I'm going to make that a little bit more orange with the hue. That's looking a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is take off some blemishes in my skin. No one has perfect skin, um, and it helps that we can take some of these spots out. So take off that guy, I'm going to take off this guy. And this is just using the spot removal tool. Take off that one. Take off that one. Maybe this one. Maybe that one. This one. I don't know why that took it over there. We're going to bring this over. And take it from there. So I just want to take out the big spots. Um, I don't want to do too much of it because we're going to do a smooth skin brush as well. So using the brush tool. They have a preset for smooth or softened skin. This is pretty powerful. Um, so what I like to do is take the clarity and bring that to about minus 50 instead of minus 100. Especially for my skin, I don't want to make it look like it's too airbrushed. So make sure there's lots of feather on this and size. Do something decently big using the right bracket. Um, this square bracket, you can make that bigger or smaller. So this brush is looking pretty good and I'm going to go ahead and paint um, all my skin. This is going to take out a lot of the smaller imperfections. Make sure I get them around the eyes. get my nose, I'm going to drop the brush size a little bit. As you can see, it definitely makes the skin a little bit flatter, um, but it takes out a lot of the imperfections. Um, and for me, I like the look of it. So that's looking better already. I'm going to miss a few spots around the eyes. Rigid nose. And I don't like to do facial hair. Um, I don't want that to be too blurred. So that's looking pretty good already. I'm gonna make sure I get around the eyebrows. Make sure you get this eye as well. Okay. So I think that is looking pretty good. If we click on um, our icon, you can see where we painted it. Um, so I pretty much got all the skin um, that I want to. So I'm going to do a little bit below the lip as well. And then Actually, now let's take that off. Okay, so now this is looking good. Definitely making some progress. So the next thing I want to do is do another brush enhancement, but for the eyes. The eyes are a really good way to make a powerful photo by creating a lot of engagement. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Iris Enhance preset, which is in here, Iris Enhance. And we're just going to paint the iris. I'm going to zoom in even more. And basically, this pumps up the brightness a little bit and the saturation. So, paint the whole iris as much as you can see. And then for me, I want to increase this a little bit more and add a little bit of clarity to it. And um, I have blue eyes, so I want to sort of enhance that by dropping the white balance 
a little bit of minus five to make them even more blue. So as you can see, the left versus the right, that's already quite a big change. I could almost do it a little brighter as well. So that's cool. Now we're going to zoom in on the other eye and do the same thing. Make sure you don't paint any of the white part of the eye because that just overexposes it uh, and it can make your eye look a little funky. Okay, so now that that eye is done, we can back out. What do you guys think of that? That's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is worry about the details. This can sort of make the difference between a really good photo and um, just a good photo, I guess. So one thing to me that is a little distracting is the holes of my hoodie that don't have any gloss rings. This is something that you might not think of, but when you're looking really closely at your photo, um, it can be a little bit distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and use the spot removal tool again and take these out. So spot removal tool you can also use to paint as well as to just take out a spot. So I'm going to paint a little bit of an area. Let's take that out. It's going to find the closest solution and that looks good on that side. It's going to do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, that's not ideal. That's a little bit better over there. So now I can take that out. So what do you guys think of that change? You want that better? You can go back. So that's before. and then after. Definitely focuses a little bit more on the face instead of having those dark black circles. Next thing I want to do is add a little bit of a vignette. So this is really going to focus the attention on the face and on the eyes. So do a vignette, I'm going to bring the amount and bring it into the negatives. I want about minus 25 and I want to increase the feather to 100 and bring up the roundness to 100 as well. Because if you don't have the roundness, um, it doesn't look like a natural vignette. It's a very post-process vignette. So I'm gonna make this a little bit darker as well. Maybe bring that up just like so. Okay, I think I'm done with this photo. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, this is looking pretty good in my opinion. So if I duplicate this photo, let me reset it. That was the before that we came from, and that is the after. If you guys like this and want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comment section. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That is greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I have lots more content planned. So stay tuned. For now. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.